So Steve, deep soil mixing is one way to stiffen up these soft soils. It's like making a cake. Take us through the process. Deep soil mixing or DSM involves a large track crane with a hollow shaft attached to a leader and supporting a head with cutting teeth and injection nozzles. The head is extended to the required depth, mixing the soil as it descends. When the head reaches the designed depth, the binder, which is usually either cement or lime, is injected at a rate of about 100 to 250 kilograms per cubic metre of soil. The head is then used to rapidly mix the cement or lime into the soil as the auger is spun rapidly at the same time as injecting the binder. As the auger is raised, the mixed soil becomes cement or lime stabilised and progressively creates a column of stabilised soil which gradually sets to form a rigid column able to support loads. It's suitable for treatment of depths generally 3 to 30 metres but can be used up to 50 metres. Fascinating stuff, Steve. Now let me get this right, all this is happening 30 metres under the ground where we're mixing all the wet sludge with the, with the lime and the mortar to stabilise the road for trucks and traffic. That's right. Basically what we end up with is a reinforced soil block that's strong enough to carry the loads of the road and, and the trucks on it. Now this is an obvious question for you, but just tell me again, why would we use DSMs? Well, DSMs are a good technique for us. We'd have very little ground disturbance. We don't need to bring in a lot of imported fills and they produce a, a soil block that has very little risk in terms of long-term settlement. They can be used in a wide range of silts, clay, sands, or they do have problems if we have lots of organic matter in them. So Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's sort of like a board pile, but instead of pouring in concrete, you're using the soil to make the column. That's right, we're improving the soil by using the cement and lime to strengthen that up, which produces columns which are lower compressibility, higher permeability and higher strength that produces a, a soil block that helps carry the load. Yeah, makes sense. Well, this sounds like a magic box. Just drop the auger down, spin it round, pump cement through it. What could go wrong? Well, it's not quite that easy. Because everything's happening 30 metres below the ground, we use very specialised firms with computer controlled equipment that are able to monitor and measure the rates of revolutions of the cutting head the pressure the cement's going in and the withdrawal rate so that we get very tight control over the process down under the ground. Now you can meet all sorts of characters on an RTO road site including geotechnical engineers which Richard you are and you've been here for a while studying these conditions and working out how best to stabilise these soft soils. One of the techniques is deep soil mixing which we're looking at right here. That's right. The road where the traffic's going across has been supported by deep soil mixed columns. Um, these columns are formed by blowing dry cement powder into the ground and to make them work, uh, the quality control during construction is absolutely vital. We want to have a certain strength of column and a certain stiffness of column and a certain diameter. To achieve that you have to do uh, thorough field trials across the whole area of the site. Um, you then have to test your trial columns and prove that they work. In worst case scenarios? Absolutely. You want to find the worst part of the ground, make sure it works, and once you've proved that it works there, do it exactly the same thing across the whole area. Now we mustn't underestimate the, the field trials and the early studies to determine exactly what type of columns we need in, in various different circumstances. That's right. The design engineers have said we need to achieve a certain strength and stiffness. Uh, we do some early laboratory tests to um, get an idea of how much cement we'll need and how much mixing, but that doesn't necessarily carry out into the field. So we then got to do field trials where we look at uh, cement contents, how much mixing we do, um, how fast you pull things out, um, and we do that over the entire area. And is all that information then sent back to the engineers so they can come back with the final specifications for the columns? That's right, we test all the columns, we send the information back, and they say, yes, we've achieved what we want. Yeah. Go ahead and build the rest. Okay, so we've done our field testing, we're ready to build. That's right, um, and we need to confirm that what we've built is the same as our, what we've achieved in the field trials. Right. So then we do a, a whole suite of tests, maybe uh, 0.5 or 1% of all the columns get tested, um, and those uh, columns need to comply with our field trials and if they don't you've got to replace the columns. Wow, how often does it, uh, this toing and froing happen from the initial investigation to testing them and retesting them? It takes months, yeah. you've got to do it thoroughly. 